Storytelling is a concept that's been there for many years. We basically always told stories sitting around the campfire in the old days. It was called myths. It was the way we brought on knowledge about the world. It was the way we created communities. It was the way we made people feel that they belonged to something. Within the academia, it's been a discipline that came in the end 90s, beginning of 2000s. It's basically framed as the argumentative turn. The whole idea is to understand the power of the argument, the way we talk about things in policy and planning. It's a way of understanding how stories get powerful. So there's a whole tradition behind it looking into the role they actually play in policy and planning. It's not just innocent stuff that we hear, but it's basically stories with a purpose, most of them. I would say one of the major challenges is basically how good the car industry is uh, in telling stories because they've been doing it for so many years and they're really skilled. They're so good at telling stories. They created an idea that cars equal freedom even if urban car driving means unfreedom a lot of the time. Storytelling is not just about creating futures that we might find desirable. Storytelling is also about how specific futures that we don't find desirable are also stuck in a place where we kind of can't get them out of that framework. And this is where storytelling plays a large role as well. So there's a lot of things that we're actually trying to change today that comes from storytelling. My name is Yuki Müller and I'm the Innovation Lifecycle Officer in Innovation Hub North at EIT Mobility. My name is Sine Sola Olesen and I'm a mobility consultant at Urban Creators with Vipke Müller. I wrote a thesis about what role storytelling plays in planning towards more car-free futures. We were interested in what role storytelling plays since we see that more and more cities are taking actions by prioritizing pedestrians and cyclists and public transport and urban life. At the same time, we see researchers are highlighting that stories and the way we tell our stories play an important role in successful, sustainable urban planning. The problem while planning for car-free cities is not a lack of awareness, but a lack of imagination. So it's really important that people are able to imagine an alternative future, and in this context, a car-free alternative future. I think it's relevant to take Copenhagen as, a, and as an object of study because it has been using storytelling as a very conscious thing. They've been aware of what they've been doing for quite a while. Copenhagen is using storytelling to reduce car use in many ways, but one of the clearest examples is how we have used the branding of the cycling city. This was started in 2017, where politicians adopted a vision saying we wanted to be the world's best cycling city. This made us work more directly with the storytelling and one of the most important uh, measures was uh, creating a new brand for the city regarding cycling. So instead of having a brand saying, I love Copenhagen with the heart, we invented one saying, I bike Copenhagen, so I bicycle instead of the heart. So this was uh, used and is still used to brand the, the city for this uh, biking initiative. Copenhageners has also taken this and they say if you ask a Copenhagener do you use a bike they're like okay I'm from Copenhagen of course I bike so it's become has become part of the identity for quite a lot of Copenhageners. In general it matters to use different ways to tell your story so it matters what kind of storytelling tools you use and one, one important storytelling tool are linguistics, then it's important to put numbers on it or especially to visualize it so that people can imagine an alternative future. And then another important storytelling tool is um, to use experience because people are really resistant to, for an alternative future until they have the possibility to experience it. For example, car-free days is a way to experience an alternative future 
or temporary installations as Copenhagen had it now in the inner city where citizens can experience how a coffee future could look like. What we often see is that planners can have ideas, they can have things they want to redo, but the politicians, they are maybe not happy to accept those plans because they're afraid that they're going to lose voters. So when you have a powerful story, you basically have something the planners can work with because they can get the politicians to say yes, because the people living in the city, they also took that story in. I hope that more policymakers, urban planners and urban stakeholders will uh, use storytelling more actively in narrating positive urban futures centered around more car-free futures and livability. <laughs>